Good morning, my name is Brando Benifei, member of the European Parliament. Thank you for inviting me to this conference organized by IJ with the support of the Association des Amis de Frank Bianchieri. Unfortunately, I cannot be here with you today due to institutional commitments which require my presence in Brussels. However, I'm happy to be able to contribute to your discussion through this video message. In these days, you will discuss about different electoral systems in Europe, possible future changes and ideas such as the transnational lists and transnational elections. Those are very important topics and as you know they are much debated both in member states and at the European level. This is a very crucial moment for Europe. The spread of anti-EU and Eurosceptic parties and movements across the Union has assumed alarming proportions. The elections in many European countries and the Brexit referendum shown us that this is really a truly European-wide phenomenon. Undoubtedly the rise of populist and anti-Euro parties caused the apprehension at the European uh, level, also after the big work done by the European Union to try to keep uh, the Europeans uh, together, the European people together. Naturally, uh, the European Union hopes that, uh, and all its institutions, that we can keep our track of positive integration, getting over political stalemates that are uh, everywhere in, uh, in, uh, in Europe and uh, stopping far-right uh, populist uh, governments. Then next year we will be uh, engaged in the European elections. That will be a crucial moment for Europe. We must ask ourselves how to foster participation in politics, especially European politics. In this regard, the electoral systems in place for the European elections we know every member state has its own one, which uh, by itself, this system can create distortions, can determine the member states' respective representation to the EU Parliament in a very di different way among the countries. In Italy, for example, we have a proportional law like all the countries, but we have some specifics. Our country elects uh, 73 MEPs in five different constituencies, Northwest, Northeast, Center, South and Islands. Every citizen can express a maximum of three preferences by respecting gender balance. However, other countries use different systems. For example, in Germany there are no preferences for the candidates, but each party decides its lists of possible representatives in a fixed hier hierarchical way. Whereas in Austria, for example, every 16 years old citizen can vote, while in other countries, for example Italy, the minimum age required for voting is 18, and to be a candidate you need to be even 25. One of the effects of Brexit will be the distribution of the seats previously belonging to the UK in the European Parliament. In the last months, the European Parliament voted on the possibility to assign a share of them to elect MEPs through transnational lists formed by European parties. This idea was also openly supported by the Italian government together with other European uh, governments, including also uh, uh, President Macron. In my opinion, being a federalist, that would have been a good way to create a new wave of European participation through a more conscious and direct choice among the European parties. And so I voted with strong conviction in favour of it. I thought it would make the European campaign more European. Unfortunately, the majority of the parliament, and with a strong uh, negative position from many, many colleagues from the European Popular Party, rejected the proposal. However, we need to find other tools to permit European citizens to be more involved in European politics and to promote a true European public sphere, which has so far been lacking, despite a partially positive experience with the uh, leading candidates for president of the European Commission at the last European elections. The transnational lists were certainly one possibility and a powerful one. But we must do more in democratizing European elections and processes also in other ways. It's important mainly for young people who often do not know much about European politics and about the work we do as European legislators. So we must create new ways to connect them, to connect young people with EU institutions. Our generation was born in an open, free and democratic Europe, thanks to the heritage of our founding fathers. But this heritage must be renewed and this is a task ahead of us. It will be our, it will be your responsibility. You have experienced the advantages of open borders due to Schengen. You have experienced the common market. You have experienced the possibility to study abroad for some time, thanks to the Erasmus Plus program. These are great 
advantages that our parents and grandparents did not have, that were built step by step, that we take for granted, but are the consequences of the work the European Union does every day to keep Europeans united. We know that this is not simple. This is not simple to make young people interested in politics. But I believe that we should do more and we can do more in order to reach this objective. Young, dynamic and open-minded people like you can be one of the key factors to relaunch and revi revive the European project. We must make sure that young people become directly involved in the process of policy making by creating new ways of political participation. We can do that on one end by thinking of new and more democratic uh, uh, electoral systems, as you are doing, to involve uh, also more young candidates, but on the other hand also by new ways of activism and participation. This is why I welcome this initiative, initiatives like this also and uh, beyond that also IJ does on a, on a, on a, on a uh, uh, European-wide uh, basis. In these three days, you will have the opportunity to discuss on Europe and to form your own opinion about many of the problems we face every day as Europeans. I hope that you will enjoy the interesting discussions and I hope that we can stay in touch also for the next uh, uh, big challenge that is strongly related to what you, you discuss. In a few weeks, the European Commission will present its proposal for the next multiannual financial framework, the new budget uh, of the European uh, Union, the multiannual one. And in that, we need to fight for a stronger Erasmus+, Plus, a stronger Europe for citizens, a stronger set of policies that support cultural uh, debate, uh, uh, democratic empowerment, uh, civic education, uh, uh, critical thinking, young people debating and meeting all over Europe. We already have programs like that. You work on them every day and I want to thank uh, EJ and uh, also the Frank Biancheri Friends Association for that work. I know about it, but we can do better, we can do more if the European Union chooses, as it should do, to invest more resources, more of our uh, 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 common uh, budget to support these initiatives. They are mostly needed in this difficult time of the European Union. So thank you very much and I hope to see you soon.